All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mr. Enyart's Mathematical Compositions. Today we are going to be doing the Grade 6 Module 3 Mid-Module Assessment Practice. So let's do it. The big thing on question one and all of its parts, A, B, C, and so forth, is to recognize that here we have a water gauge and we have the river water that is well below zero. So in this case, when we ask what would zero represent, what could it possibly be? It wouldn't be where the water is because if we were to color the water, right, this is where the water is at, that's at, that's at negative two. So usually when you walk up to a river, think some common sense here, what do you have to do to get down to the water? You got to get over the, you know, here, here's your grass level, and then you go down this, uh, I don't know if we can find ourselves like a brown here. Uh, let's see, where's brown at? There's kind of a brownish, kind of in the oranges and reds, mixed with some yellows here. And there we go. I'm going to take that brown. And let's fill this in right here. Right, you got to walk down some rocky terrain, some some soil, and you walk down this little slope, and then you get to the river. And that makes sense because the river's running, so it's eroding, you know, all the land and all that jazz. So we'll maybe throw some rocks in here. Here's a rock. Here's a rock. Here's a rock. And so now, as we're kind of visualizing the walk, you know, you are up here, and you get here, and you're like, oh look. A river and you walk down to the river you're actually going below sea level right below the land level um, so this would all be sky and, and, and stuff up here and hopefully if the river ever rose up above this land you'd be in trouble right if it rose above you know it can rise into here it probably has which is why this is just rocks and soil but if it gets above this sea level line this horizon line of land then you have yourself a flood right? So now that you've put into perspective the common sense and, and reasonableness and reality of this question, now it's pretty easy to explain here what zero represents, to explain here um, what it tells you about where the river water is compared to sea level, and on C, what number represents the opposite of the water level shown and again, this is the top of the water level, so whatever this number is, we're looking for the opposite of that. And what would it mean if the river was at that level? So, yeah, that one's pretty clear and obvious. And then, of course, a fun question here on what you might expect to see on the gauge tomorrow if it did nothing but rain for 24 hours straight. So make sure you write a full sentence here. All right, so on this question, we have a uh, mistake in accounting, the difference between depositing and um, withdrawing, and same amount, right? So we have the number line down here. You can read all this, pause the video, go for that. I changed the amount, obviously, uh, for my example, but if you can do it with mine, you can do it with this. So the first thing I would do, since I know I'm going to be identifying things on a number line, is figure out how to organize this number line. If zero is here, what are these numbers? So these obviously are the positive numbers, right? Because they're to the right of zero and these would be our negative numbers. So um, make sure that obviously if you have a positive, so the key is to understand the vocabulary, which really that's what a lot of life comes down to, knowing what is being said around you. So if you, if you uh, write a check, isn't that going to be money coming out of your account? So where would negative 714 be? So as I look at my number line, I have my zero. I have to figure out what are these tick marks going to be? Are these going to be fives? Is this going to be negative five, negative 10, negative 15? Well, that doesn't really make sense because I'm only going to, you know, a little past negative seven and 14 hundredths. So I'm probably going to do these by ones. And then I would just zoom way in. That's the beauty of this app. And I'm going to write, oh, it zoomed me back out, but that's okay. We have negative one, we have negative two, we have negative three, negative four, and so on. So now I need to figure out where my numbers go. And negative seven and 14 hundredths is going to be just past negative seven and a little bit in. Now remember, negative 7.5 would be halfway. So it's going to just be to the left of negative seven. And therefore, positive seven and 14 hundredths will be just to the right. 
So as you can see, I have put on my numbers and we have our withdrawal over here. This would be take money out of our account. This would be negative. This is what he really is supposed to do. But instead he wrote a deposit that he has $7.14. And obviously your amount is according to your test, but that's what it's showing. And so you can see these are opposites, right? So now we can explain their differences. And again, this is your numbers. I'm using these numbers. So you'll have to make adjustments as you're watching this. Um, and then, you know, zero would represent having no money in his account. The deposit said he had 714, but what he really did is write a check, which means he now owes 714. That's actually a disparity of $14.28. That's a big difference. Um, but I can tell that they're opposites. I could say things like, $7.14 is positive and therefore to the right uh, because it, a deposit would be money going into your account and getting bigger. I could say that negative 7 and 14 is to the left of zero, that it is a negative integer because a withdrawal would take money out and make my account less and going to the left is less. Lots of different ways and terms I can use to just explain the difference between these numbers, but it does ask about debit and credit. So remember, your debit card is your own money that you take out when you swipe that debit card. So a debit, right, is when you take money out of your account. And when you think of credit, think about when you do something really good and everyone goes, yeah, little Johnny did it. You get the credit. You get the credit. And so credit is something you get. So if you are credited that amount, that's going to be our positive. If you debit that amount, that's going to be your negative. The debit comes out. Right, you can think of also, you kind of see the word debt in there, right? Debt is a negative term, debit is a negative term. Credit, right, if you get the credit for doing something really good, you get noticed, that's a good thing. So credit is positive, all right? Okay, so again, for this question, I've changed the numbers, um, but all you have to do is remember that it's pretty much the exact same situation as yours. So if you can figure it out with these, you can figure it out with yours. So make sure you don't write these on your test because your teacher's gonna be like, what, where'd you get these numbers from? And you're gonna have to be like, I uh, watch this video from this teacher who's crazy. Um, okay, so we have miles before and miles past. If this is the checkpoint in a race, I'd be running like this, right? Because number lines go left to right. What does it mean to be before? Well, that would be this section, right? So the before are our negative terms. Now, if I'm past the checkpoint, that's gonna to be to the right, that is going to be our positive numbers. So now we can identify what our number should be. So for mine, because my numbers go all the way up to two, I'm gonna make each of these worth one. Now, if you don't have any numbers bigger than one here, you could make this one and this be negative, the negative one, and this be negative one half, this be one, this be one half. The more spread out it is, the easier it is to find where it goes. So for my sake, because I have a two here, I'm gonna number mine from one and two. So this is gonna be negative two, negative one, this is gonna be one, this is gonna be two. And so now I can go and identify, okay, this one says before, so what is one fifth before? Well, if this is um, negative, that's gonna be negative one fifth right, because it's before, so where would negative one-fifth go? It'd be over here, and so I need to split my one into five pieces and put it at the first piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put all those points down and label them, and you can pause it and figure out how. So here you can see I have them all posted now. Negative one-fifth is here because it's before. Um, 75 hundredths past is before the one right there. So this is how mine would look, and now I can clearly see, clearly see left to right. So this allows me to answer all the following questions. For example, which one is closest to the checkpoint? Florence, because they're only one-fifth away. I don't care which side they're on, this one's only one-fifth away, and that's where absolute value comes into play, right? Um, what, which one has the greatest absolute value? Rebecca, she's the farthest away. She's two units away. Nobody is more than one unit away, and that would be this person, Lita. So um, which ones are, um, you know, how much farther does Nancy need to run in order to reach the checkpoint? Well, 1.4 miles farther because she's negative 1.4. She's, she's 1.4 away from it, right? Um, so once you are, once you organize your number line and you successfully put your numbers and plots down according to what is up in the chart, then it's pretty easy to answer all those questions. 
So on this question, there's really not a lot of help I can give you outside of you going back and looking at the videos for ordering rational numbers with positives and negatives. Because um, bottom line is, you just need to be able to read this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to read this out loud to you so that you can read it and then ask yourself, is this a true statement? My recommendation, step one, make a number line and plot these three numbers on your number line. Then read it left to right or right to left, depending on what you're looking at. So what they're trying to do is they are trying to measure them uh, by what keeps the coldest temperatures. So um, the coldest temperature obviously would be the most negative, right? Um, so as you read this, we're just seeing is Marta or is Andrea correct? And this one says, listen carefully, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This one says negative four thirds is less than negative two and 9100. Sorry, I'm going to start over. This is not negative four thirds. I don't know why I just said that. Negative four and three tenths is less than negative two and ninety one hundredths, which is less than five and seven tenths. This one says negative two and ninety one hundredths is less than negative four and three hundredths, which is less than five and seven tenths. So it looks like both of them say the biggest number is 5.7, which makes sense because these two are negative and that's positive. The question is which of these is colder and therefore should be less? All right. Okay, so as you can see, I've changed the numbers again. And um, so basically, if I have a road that's up a mountain, right? So I have this mountain here and then there's this road that goes around the mountain. This is zero, right? This is sea level or zero. Um, so the road right here would not be at zero. The road would be at 500. However, what I'm looking at is this space kind of above and below on how it needs to change to be on level with the road. So in my mind, I'm thinking of 500 as zero. So when I make my number line, and then you make your number line in this situation, you would put 500 here. That's my zero. And then I'm, it looks like my next biggest number, right, that makes sense here is 503 looks like the biggest number. And then my smallest number looks like 497. So I really only need three spaces. One, two, three one, two, three. And so that helps me make my number line. And then I can post my, my, my markers. This is 503. Uh, this is going to be 497. And so now that I have all my plots pointed from my chart, you can see that if this is then turned to zero, all right, so let's change colors here and let's say, okay, we're going to make that be our zero marker, right? That's the, the, the point of origin of everything we're going to build. You can see that the 501.3 is 1.3, right? Plus 1.3 to the right. The 502 is going to be plus 2 to the right. The 499.1 is going to be minus 0.9, right? If you think about how this works, here would be zero. This would be negative 1 because 499 is one less, right? So this would be nine tenths less than five uh, than zero, and only one tenth greater than negative one. And so that's gonna be negative 0.9. And then 498.5 is gonna be negative 1.5. 503 is gonna be positive three. And then 497 is gonna be negative three. And so that's where you get this next question. Um, and then once you have that, it's pretty easy. All you're doing is ordering them. And since you already have your number line, you basically are just going left to right. This is going to be my smallest. This is going to be my biggest because notice our mouths are always eating to the right, which means the numbers to the right are greater. So this is less than this, which is less than this, which is less than this. And it even tells you you're ordering it from least to greatest. As always, thanks for watching. You got this. Go get her done.